Winter, it's upon us. It's I almost see a here. Big smile on your face too when you're talking about. I can't about help it. Winter. I love it. <laughs> oh, that forecast was so fetch, by the way, too. Oh, thank I love you. It. Thank <laughs> you, Michael. Yeah. Stop <laughs> trying to make movie. fetch happen. Yeah. <laughs> is that what it is? Mean Girls. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good movie quote. And you know, look at you know what the pattern looks like here, yeah. Nick, in the uh, you know for the winter outlook. Kind of interesting, right? Very interesting. Yeah. We've got to talk about the little La Nina pattern that mm -hmm. we have set up as we've got temperatures that are below average, not by much, maybe about a half a degree, but a half a degree here can make a big difference right. downstream, a huge difference, right? And mm -hmm. so when you talk about a La Nina winter, that typically shows the Pacific jet is further north and the Arctic jet, same thing. They kind of meet up a little bit more towards the northern central tier of the United States, bringing better chances for snow to show up across the northern tier. Yeah, it's really interesting because literally what the what La Nina ends up doing is it kicks this jet right here, this one that you're seeing in this green coloring up toward the north, so a lot more wet and perhaps a little more cool Pacific Northwest, and as you mentioned, the northern tier <coughs> of the country. But it's also drier, typically speaking, when you talk about a La Nina, yeah. here in the southern tier of the country and perhaps a little bit warmer. But what I always find really interesting about a La Nina winter is this right here, that active storm track, yes. and the fact that you get like polar vortex outbreaks. Yeah, and guess what? We're already experiencing one, or yeah. will experience one as we head into Monday, and uh, that's that goes right into play with what we expect here mm -hmm. with this La Nina pattern, as this shaded white box represents all of winter, and this is the average for temperatures. Mm -hmm. And we're trending a little bit below that, but you can see how we'll be on the uptick moving towards the end of winter time. Mm -hmm. And so we might be getting off to a quicker winter start yeah. here based on that overall trend. And this yeah. is exactly what you were just saying, right? That lobe of the polar vortex crashes down mm -hmm. as far south as say Florida. Not only does it support Big time snows across the Great Lakes, but maybe even some nor'easters too. Yeah, that and the big time cold as well. It's really interesting too because the polar vortex in a situation like this, sometimes it's a little bit weaker. Yeah. And so if it was strong, it would stay strong and firm up north and it would hold its place. When it's weak, it kind of lollygags. You see a lot of fluctuations in our jet stream and all that lollygagging ends up sending that cooler air much further toward the south. And then to your point, you get these big storm tracks up toward the Midwest and Northeast. I am, now I'm not trying to put bad juju out there in the atmosphere, but I am hoping that we see a nor'easter you know? in New York City this winter season. A lot of people have been saying that. A lot the, of New Yorkers. Yeah, we've had a couple of snowfalls here and there that haven't really added up to a whole lot here in New York City, but I think you're in the majority on that 